Hi, this is Nori with My Service Depot. Today we are going to cover the setup tab for Smart Service. The setup tab will help you get Smart Service ready for your company. You may need more time to make some of these decisions during this video, as the settings that we will be covering today affect how the program operates. Let's start off by opening up the setup tab. The setup tab is located in the top right hand corner of the program in a button labeled setup. Take a look at the company information on the left hand side. The information you enter here will be seen by your customers, so please add the appropriate address and contact information. Next, we will add a logo to our smart service work orders. If you have a logo ready, you can follow the directions on this tab to add it to the program. Try to resize the logo in Microsoft Paint. You can then copy and paste it into the box using the keyboard shortcuts, Control C for Charlie and Control V for Victory. That will help you copy and paste the logo into this box. If you have issues adding your logo, please call our client support team so we can assist you further. Moving on, we will take a look at our defaults tab. Here we can tell Smart Service what suggestions to make when creating a new customer or job record. Before we continue, remember that none of these setting changes are permanent. They can always be modified on a per customer or per job basis. Also, the information we specify in here will be helpful only if it applies to most of our customers and jobs. Before continuing, please consult your QuickBooks accountant. For example, I may want to specify an account for all of my customers and jobs to be tagged with. I'll click in Account and choose Account Receivable. If you do have more than one account listed in this dropdown, please consult your QuickBooks accountant before continuing. Also, I would like to specify some default payment terms for new customers and jobs. I will select my payment terms, due on receipt. If you are charging sales tax, please select Taxable Sales from the dropdown and consider setting a tax item below. Continuing on, we'll click on the Scheduler tab to decide what times will be displayed on our Smart Service Scheduling Board. We will have two categories of time inside of this window, a business time and a scheduler time. For now, let's set the business start time to match the usual time of your first appointment of the day. The business end time will match the usual time of your last appointment. The scheduler start time will be reserved for things like company meetings or jobs that would begin before your business start time. Consequently, the scheduler end time would represent the latest I would possibly end a job. If you offer 24-hour service or would like the entire day displayed on your scheduling board, set your scheduler start time for 12 a.m. and your scheduler end time for 11.55 p.m. Smart Service also allows the scheduling and creation of estimates. For today's video, we will be skipping estimates. However, if you are interested in the estimation features of Smart Service, please alert your trainer or the client support team for further assistance. The next tab over would be Work Orders. Inside of the Work Orders screen, you may notice that there are several options. However, for today, let's cover the most important features. But before we do so, let's cover what a work order is used for. Traditionally, a work order is an order received by an organization from a customer or client or an order created internally within the organization. A work order may be used for products or services. You may also collect a customer signature on your work order to obtain consent to perform a service for that customer. Now that you understand the purpose of a work order, we can choose the name that you were previously using with this type of document. If you do not see the name that you prefer in this list, you may always type something else into the drop down. Once you have selected the name, be sure to check the box next to Inactivate Job upon posting as complete or cancel, as this will help you later on throughout the program. Our next step will be to determine whether or not itemized pricing should be displayed on the work order. These settings will also affect iFleet users, so if you are using iFleet, please keep that in mind. If you would like iFleet users or the work order to display quantities for the items listed, please check Include Quantity and Item Pricing. If you would like the iFleet users or the work order to display pricing for the items listed, please check Include Prices on Work Order. If you are not sure which settings you need, or if you have a question about the setting you chose, please notify your trainer or contact the client support team. 
There are still two settings we need to adjust. These are blocks of text that appear on the work order. On the left, we have example terms and conditions of service. On the right, we have payment terms and conditions. We recommend that you erase these terms and type or paste in terms that better suit your company, as the text entered here currently are the terms and conditions for a training class on-site visits. This next section is an interesting one. Let's say you've been working in smart service and you have some special information you would like to store about your customers, but you don't see a place for it. Maybe it's an alarm code or a gate code that your customer has given you so that your field employees could let themselves in. Although smart service does not have a field for this currently, by using the user field section of the setup tab, we can create our own. Since this gate code belongs to my customer, on the left hand side, let's choose customer. And in the next available space, I will type in the name for my new user defined field. Let's make this one gate code. This way, the next time I open any of my customer records, I have created my own spot to enter their gate code under the user fields tab. The user fields section has many uses. Feel free to create your own fields for any of the record types listed on the left hand side. So make sure to remember to come back to this section later if you cannot find a place for the information you are trying to store. Our last section for today is the required field section. By checking any of these boxes, I can guarantee that my office personnel always gather the information I require about the customer or job before closing that record. Using class tracking in QuickBooks, check the box next to class to ensure this information is always kept on file for the future. Would you like to keep track of how the customers heard about you? Check the box next to marketing campaign to try out some of the marketing features of smart service. With our setup tab complete, you're ready to get started with smart service. Please remember to consult your trainer if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the information covered today, or call our client support specialist at 888-518-0818. We look forward to speaking with you. And as always, for more hints, tricks, and tips, please visit www.smartserviceinfo.com slash wiki.